I follow a lot of unsavory characters on Twitter. It's kind of like what we do on GAM. To do my job properly, I need to immerse myself in all the buttfuckery of religion on all levels. So I follow Ray Comfort, Joel Osteen, Josh Fierstein, Ken Ham, and of course, if you want to keep up with the Amish Wolverine, you also have to follow the Discovery Institute, or as Stephen Novella dubbed it in what might be my all-time favorite portmanteau, the Disco Toot. So the other day, the Disco Toot tosses out a tweet baiting people to their blog that reads, Whether the subject is climate change or evolution, who determines what is considered scientific fact? And then there's a little link to the blog. And of course, I have this, ooh, ooh, I know this one kind of moment. So I tweet back. I say, the consensus of scientists in relevant fields. If you need more than a tweet to answer that, it's because you're obfuscating. Well, some online defender of hams decides to chime in with a series of six tweets or so. Good sign that he's really mastered the Twitter medium. He says at length, quote, Consensus never determines fact, only consensus. The following were wrong. Bloodletting, Ptolemaic solar system, septic surgery practices, thalidomide, saccharin, dietary fiber, imminence of fusion reactors, stratospheric ozone depletion, acid rain, and high-dose animal testing for carcinogenicity. And all of these scientists were in the relevant fields. And nine tweets worth of quote. So never mind that I was responding to a tweet asking what was considered scientific fact, not what was fact. Here's the short answer. And those that were wrong were determined to be so through widespread consensus of scientists in relevant fields. Your argument just defeated itself. That was my tweet. The long answer? Well, that's my diatribe. And it starts like this. Fuck off. I mean, bloodletting? Funny how religious people don't want to be held accountable for the shit that they did in the 14th century, and yet it's apparently okay to hang Galenic medicine on science? What the fuck are you even talking about here? This is a practice that dates back as far as written history all the way up to the dawn of scientific medicine. It was the scientific approach to medicine that ended the bloodletting for fuck's sake. I mean, it's not like Jesus showed up in the late 1700s to point out that the bloodletting stuff wasn't working. It took science to figure that out. So sure, whatever, take a victory and spin it as a failure. That's what intellectually honest people do, isn't it? Oh, and by the way, what was the religious prescription for all those maladies that ancient people used bloodletting for? If you said exorcisms, lucky charms, and magic spells, give yourself 10 points. And if you notice that those are still the only prescriptions religion has on tap, go ahead and give yourself 10 more. But the tweet just gets stupid. I mean, the Ptolemaic solar system? Dude, Google, when did the scientific revolution begin? It'll give you the date that Copernicus published his refutation of the Ptolemaic model. This would be like claiming victory in a race because you made it to the starting line earlier. And his examples just get more insane from there. A little more pre-scientific medical bullshit. Then he conveniently forgets that the countries that did the most science avoided that whole thalidomide thing. And then he just starts tossing out words, I guess. I mean, dietary fiber is a scientific incident. What the fuck does that even mean? After that, he mistakes science fiction for future reporting. Then he tosses out a bunch of conspiracy theory bullshit that actually has been upheld by the consensus of science and ends on puppy cancer. And look, even I know you never end on puppy cancer. But the key here is that the whole inflated argument relies on the fact that religion has never advanced. You know, it's easy to point to shit that used to be the scientific consensus and then changed because science is constantly learning new shit and self-correcting. It's perpetually revising and perfecting its model. That's what makes it science. Religion, on the other hand, has just been clinging to the same bullshit all along. You can never point to something religious people used to think was true and then abandoned because they haven't advanced an inch in thousands of fucking years. Their bullshit has grown more complicated, I guess, but it's never gotten any better. And here we've got some jack-off apologist trying to use that as though it were a strange. And sure, this is a particularly bad example of that argument, but we hear variants of it constantly. It's especially prevalent with the creationists and the climate change deniers, but it's basically a tactic throughout all of denialism. Science was wrong once, ergo we can't trust anything science has to say, which is basically like gouging out your eardrums because you thought Credence was singing about a bathroom on the right. I mean, think about what a childishly misguided definition of science it takes to even formulate this argument in your head. Science, as you well know, isn't a set of facts, it's a process through which we determine what are and are not facts. It's a method of determining the truth value of claims. It's a means of refining our understanding. So if you want to disprove science or discount the importance of scientific consensus, you can't get there by attacking a conclusion. You have to attack the process. Otherwise, you're just attacking science that wasn't sciencey enough. You know, I mean, look, even if this twidiot had scraped up a few genuine examples of times when the scientific consensus was grossly incorrect, he still wouldn't have disproved the current iteration of those scientific theories, unless, of course, we disprove those theories through some means other than science. 
to actually prove his point or even support it, he'd have to be able to point to a portion of the scientific method that is in error. And the fact that all he can come up with is shit where the self-correcting mechanisms within the method work should be all the argument anyone ever needs to dismiss this asinine objection. In a lot of ways, this is the great atheist victory of our age. You know, the people on the other side of this argument have all but given up on disproving the godless conclusion through better theories or more convincing evidence. Instead, they're now arguing with the very means by which knowledge is acquired. And amazingly enough, they don't seem to recognize that that's a white flag. They're admitting that if you think in the way that's proven to be most effective, you will always think they're wrong. And at the same time, they're admitting that when sound reasoning fails to support their position, they're less likely to give up on the position than the sound reasoning. 